No, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. This is about our emotions. This is about how we feel. This is about the textures that we access. This is about the ingredients that we put in our body. This is about the quality of the sounds that we hear. This is about the quality of the words that we're choosing to say to other people. This is about the quality of the words that we're putting into our brain. You Now tuned in to the high vibration of the Free Your Energy Podcast. Welcome back to the Free Your Energy Podcast. Today's episode is all about abundance. Abundance, all right? When it comes to abundance, remember that you deserve abundance, all right? And abundance is bigger than money. Most people, when they think about abundance, they think about financial prosperity. And while that's certain, certainly a piece of it, a component of it, abundance is truly about energy and, and about the emotions that you experience it's about your intention it's about what you show up for within within your your discipline so today's chat is actually an hour long it comes from my private group coaching community called mastery circle uh, i coach in there every two weeks it's like this every two weeks we go for about an hour there's time for q a and i'm teaching i'm preaching i'm bringing people forward i'm calling people forward the link will be below to sign up for Mastery Circle. With abundance, there's a few things to know. One, uh, it doesn't matter what you went through. So many people, because of their story, because of what they went through, because of what they didn't get, they have this concept that they don't deserve or are not entitled to abundance, and you are. There's abundance all around us. There's an abundance of clouds. There's an abundance of wind. Uh, there's an abundance of mangoes and water. There's an abundance of love. There's an abundance of energy. Abundance is all around us and you do deserve it. You do deserve access to it. And it doesn't make you greedy to want to have abundance. It doesn't, uh, the shame that you experience when you think of, oh, I want abundance and I, I feel shame. That's not your, that's not your shame to, to hold on to. You need to let that go. We deserve abundance. We deserve to thrive. We deserve to have love. We deserve to have a pathway to heal from the things that we experienced that maybe didn't have anything to do with us. Right. And we also deserve to offer forgiveness to others and to receive forgiveness. We deserve to have an abundant life. And anybody that tells you uh, differently is is not operating in the vibration of abundance. I'm living in abundance and I want an abundant life. And that means that I want a high quality textures in my house. I want the sun to shine through my window. I want to have access to high quality food. I want to find peace and resolutions with my friends and with my partner and with my son. I want to find a pathway to make the money that I want to make so I can live the life that I want to make. And regardless of if that's this career that I'm in now or something different, I deserve abundance. And I will not settle for anything less than the frequency of abundance. And you should not either. When it comes to the concept of abundance, I just want you to know that it feels free. It feels light. It feels easy. At times, it can feel effortless. It can feel like joy. It can feel like a, a radiation of energy. It can feel like laughter. It can feel like peace and harmony. And that's not to discredit the other shadow, darker emotions that we experience, the sadness, the anger, the pain, the guilt, because those are human experiences as well. And we do want to validate that. And I'm not into the concept of let's just be positive. Let's just be positive. Let's just be positive. I'm not into that. I I'm, I'm believe I believe in integrating what we experience, integrating what we feel, whether that's the darker shadow um negrito experiences or whether it's the lighter white calmer clearer albino experiences where whichever whatever it is there's a full integration necessary but keep in mind though that on throughout that whole process keep in mind of what's possible because that's where the abundance lies and what's possible so let's dive right in like i said this one hour chat is from uh today's session in the mastery circle uh listen to it dive in. There's a lot, a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of gems. If for some reason you don't hear me speaking, it's because I'm listening. Uh, I'm listening to what the person is saying, and then I'm, I'm going to respond. You deserve abundance, and don't let anybody tell you differently. Thank you for listening to the Free Your Energy podcast. Enjoy today's clip. So let's start off with a question, and I want I want to hear responses. Uh, don't think about the responses. Don't plan the responses. Just answer honestly and openly and fully and authentically. Just answer. Just respond. Uh, what does abundance feel like? All right, so we got easy, smooth, joy, radiating, heart radiating, freedom, full. Okay. Let's not get into naming what the opposite of abundance is because it could be a lot of different things, right? Let's just name those emotions, though. Emotionally, what's the opposite of abundance? What does it feel like? Like we say it feels like it's easy, it's smooth, it's joy, it's radiating, it's freedom, it's full. The 
opposite of abundance. We named it as sadness, depression, loss, hard, confusion, dense. Uh, I even said the word tense, but I'm going to keep it in there because it is there is tension. The opposite of abundance is is tension. And so we're going to start off with a few quotes to just drop our mind tuned, tuning it into abundance. I am alive, therefore I am already thriving. I breathe, therefore I prosper. I am grieving, therefore I am prospering. And I feel like those lines are just the foundation of, of gratitude, which really signals us and signals our DNA and our brain to tap into the abundance that is available, is available to us. And he ended it, He this was a chat he did, he ended it by saying, my breath is the gift of life. Which, uh, if you actually think about it for a second, that's true. The first thing you do when you're born is you breathe. You breathe. That's the first thing you do. And the last thing you do when you die is you exhale. You take a breath. Our breath in, in uh, like the yogic practice, yoga, um, we, call, we refer to it as prana. Prana is the energy, your breath life force, the life force of your, your breath. So you may have heard the phrase like pranayama. That's talking about the life force within you. And that's what the purpose of yoga is, is the, the the divine connection between mind, body, and soul. And the easiest pathway to do that, which is free to all of us, is our breath. So I found that quote to be very simple but profound, okay? So what we're going to do here, there's a lot of ways to approach this when we're, when we're talking about abundance. And what you have to understand when, we, when it comes to abundance is that the the person often speaking or teaching abundance they they usually have a background in something uh that helps them teach it so for example you may talk to a psychologist and they're going to teach it differently than someone who is maybe working in like the quantum field like a quantum scientist right you also have these like very woo woo spiritual people and they may teach it very differently than someone who actually was raised in poverty and grew out of that, or they were raised in wounds and they grew out of it, okay? And so I think it's very important that as we are seekers or curious students of abundance or we're tuning ourselves to that vibration, I think it's very important that we're aware of the person who's signaling the abundance, I think that we're aware of where they're at or where they're coming from just because i feel like it helps gives us gives give us context to the way that we're perceiving it that's fair right okay it's like i mean if i hire you to be my personal trainer i want to know that you know something about this right okay so just very quickly where this comes from for me uh this is a big subject for me i didn't grow up in poverty i didn't i didn't grow up in poverty i definitely grew up in lack though I definitely grew up with uh, with alcoholic parents, but my parents were also very, very smart and very, very gifted. And so I was always fighting like that double edged sword of growing up with like high, highly intellectual people, uh, but they lacked like emotional awareness and the abundance abundance. It can get created through the lever of your intelligence, but it truly lists. It truly lives in emotionally inside of us this is more of an emotional thing than it, it, it is an intelligence thing okay um and then i would say that through the middle of my life i was fighting daily to create so-called abundance i feel like i was tuned in to the frequency of abundance and now where i'm at i feel like this is easy like this is second nature i almost feel like this is no no struggle to me whatsoever i almost feel when it comes to the idea of abundance that i have uh, no lack or no friction. It feels like it, it almost feels automatic in a way. So I would say that's the arc of my life and how we got here. And we're going to dive into the work. All right. This is, there's a lot here. There's a lot, a lot, a lot. That's why I'm, re I'm recording this. So we, I can make sure that we, uh, we can revisit this, uh, to give credit where this came from. This came from a course I took like six years ago. It was uh, a Joe Dispenza course. He's a neuroscientist. Um, and he talks about just the quantum way we think. And he talks about our brain and how our brains process things. And so I'll take you through this chart really quickly here. How to change your reality. And so on the left side, if you have the same thoughts, you will make the same choices. And when you make the same choices, you will have the same actions, the same behaviors that will give you the same experiences. 
and that gives you the same feeling like and that is your old state of being uh and so the one of the premises here is that where a lot of us are judging our life based on how we feel and so the premise is that your thoughts are creating your actions and then your actions are creating your experience and your experience creates an emotion and that's how a lot of us judge our life we are judging our life based on the emotions that we're feeling and so when people talk about their lives what we're doing is we're talking about the feeling of our lives but if we're approaching this from a from an architect perspective from a builder's perspective if we actually want to change or shift our lives there is actually no purpose in talking about our feelings other than the validation we get on the human level if we actually want to change our lives we have to change our thoughts the thoughts are the genesis so you change your thoughts because your choices and your behaviors come from your thoughts and then your thoughts excuse me and then you have the uh, emotions that come from these behaviors okay now some people some psychologists like to argue that you can't change your thoughts and that you have to just change your actions and changing your actions change your thoughts i would argue that who cares who cares which way it happens because your thoughts and your actions occur before the emotions occur so i, I would argue who cares it, they still arrive at emotions that we're experiencing from what we do and what we experience right that in order to have a new state of being you have to arrive at new feelings and the pathway to arrive at new feelings is to start with new thoughts those new thoughts then lead you to new choices those new choices then lead you to new actions and behaviors which then leads you to new experiences which gives you a new state of being I give you a very simple example that I experienced. About a, a month ago, I was having a spasm in my, like right under my eye. And I could not figure out why I was having this like muscle spasm. I had to investigate my life. And I'm like, okay, what, what am I doing that's causing this? Because I had never experienced it. I was stressed. I wasn't sleeping. I was having two cups of coffee a day. And I figured it was something in that equation. It had to either be caffeine, the stress I was dealing with, or my lack of sleep. So what did I do? I went back to my 8 39, 9 p.m. bedtime range. I cut the caffeine. I do have my cup of coffee today because I've only had one cup this week. I cut caffeine completely and I worked on reducing my stress. The little spasm went away. But before I did that, I stayed in my old state of being and I just was like, oh, this will go away. So I had the same thoughts, I had the same choices, the same actions, which gave me the same experiences, which gives me the same feelings. That's your old state of being. The new state of being requires an upgrade. And, and, and your upgrade can come from anywhere. It could be someone inspiring you. It could be you being inspired by something you experience. It could be you being inspired by a potential new reality. It could, it could come from so many different sources. It could just be you on Master Circle saying, damn, you know what? I'm about to step this up the thought level i'm just going to step up my thought level so that framework is important for us as we're tackling the idea of quote unquote abundance because there is that's the neurological pathway from a neuroscientist that he explains how we can literally become into a new state of being and so if we feel like we are inside of sadness depression loss Everything is hard, it's confusion, it's tense, it's dense. There's nothing wrong with those. Those are all emotions. Those are all feelings. There's nothing wrong with that. That is the human experience. We will feel that. Those are very real. I validate it. I honor you when you feel that. I felt all of those things. I will feel all of these things again because I'm a human being. And it's worth noting that we do know, all of us now, we consciously know from a neurological perspective, we know the pathway now to create a new state of being. We all know it now. It's new thoughts, new choices, new actions and behaviors, new experiences, new feelings, which will create a new state of being. Question, does your environment control your thinking or does your thinking control your environment? Yeah, it's a paradox question. So does your environment control your thinking or does your thinking control your environment? Yeah, it's a paradox question. It's both. It is both. It's both. 
and it can vary. It's it can vary. It can be one or the other. It can be neither for you for for us. We're all different. It can be both. That question is important because it's important for you to figure out where are you more impressionable. Because I could tell some people, I could tell some people just say, hey, control your thinking and you will control your environment. And they can take that and they're like, all right, cool. I know that in order for me to dictate this environment, I just got to control the way I think. I think Laura is like that. Laura has that that type of personality where if I say, hey, control your thinking and you'll control your environment, Laura's like, all right, cool, I can do that. Not everybody's like that. Some of us, we need to change our environment. Some of us are only going to get the level of thinking we need to get when we change the environment. Perfect example of this. I I have been sports betting for the last four years. I just stopped sports betting two days ago. The reason why I stopped sports betting two days ago is because I have no reason to sports bet. I don't even know why I was doing it. Watching sports, it just it is psychologically programmed me to be a customer to sports bet. I don't need the money from that. I don't know why I was doing it. I lost a bet the other day and I was mad. I'm like, why did I do this? I wasn't mad that I lost a bet. I was mad that I subconsciously did something and I I wasn't even choosing to really do this. It was more of a something. I feel like they tricked me into it. And so I'm sitting here like, why am I doing this? So I changed my environment. I went through my phone. I deleted all the apps, all the, all the sports betting apps. And I deleted all the things associated with sports. I went on my computer because this is me changing my environment. I went to my computer, I blocked all the sports apps, ESPN.com, NBA.com, NFL.com, so I can't hear anything about it. I went on my Twitter, and I went on my um, Instagram, and I went on my YouTube, my three social medias that I use, and I muted, deleted, or blocked all things related to sports. I love sports, but I don't want to sports bet. And so therefore, in order to create a new state of being, I have to have new thoughts, I have to have new actions. And so I changed the environment. Because with, with with betting, betting actually can become an addiction, right? And so with anything of that nature, it may be too hard for you to control your thinking. So in that situation, you have to control your environment. So now when I go on my phone, the environment of my phone, there's there's nothing on here that's, that signals my brain that says, hey, you should sports bet. The only things I see on my phone now are, are productivity, my Spanish lessons, my bank accounts, my email. And this new app I downloaded to track how long I'm not sports betting is called I Am Sober. So if you, any of if any of you have any uh, addictions you want to track, you can use that app right there. And so now my brain is tuned to not doing it, to not seeing it. There's no triggers that are going to pop up for me, right? The same thing would apply as let's say you're on some type of physical fitness journey, whether you're trying to get stronger or flexible, whether you want to to have more balance, where you want to lose weight, gain muscle. Whatever the goal is, I can easily tell you, oh, yeah, just go to the gym. Oh, yeah, just eat good. Oh, I, I could I could tell you that some people are programmed. This is this is about understanding abundance. Some people are, un, are, are programmed to say, OK, I got the direction. I just need to execute the direction. So some people can control their thoughts that way. Some people can't. Some people have to say, OK, I need to control my environment. Then. So my, what's my food environment? What is my my environment when I wake up? Is my stuff ready for me or or um, is my stuff ready or am I trying to get it ready? Right. It's like if you control the environment, it, it makes it 10 times easier for you to thrive in the pillar, whatever pillar of life it is. OK, let me move forward. OK, there's a story. My allergies are killing me right now, but I feel a lot better. I do feel a lot better. I got the I got the allergy medicine that you recommended, Malika, and I feel a lot better. All right, so he told this story in the course that I took that was interesting. He talked about he talked about his enemy. Does anybody here have an enemy? None, none of you. None, none, no one here has an enemy ever. Not at any point in life have we ever had an enemy. Like, okay, okay, okay. You know, just like, you know, an enemy. You're like, <laughs> I don't know how to define an enemy. It's like, you're, they're like your antagonist. They're like your, you know, they're not like, yeah, you got haters. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. 
So we've, we, you know, we've experienced it, a hater or just that one person in fourth grade that just used to bother you, you know, like, you know, enemy. Uh, okay, okay. So just think about that person for a second. Just think, just think about your enemy. It could be one of your, one of your bosses. You know, it could be, it could be anybody. It could be freaking you sometimes, you know, you could be your own enemy to a degree there, right? I, so I had an enemy in, uh, when I played college football is, I won't say his name just to respect him, but we'll just call him Chris. And I mean, we used to just get into it. Like we, we we would never have peaceful conversations. Like it would never be like, hey man, how you doing? Like it was just war. It was like on site every time I would see him. Now, this was manufactured because I played defense in college and he played offense. So we always lined up against each other. We came in, uh, we came in at the same time. He was from Wisconsin. I was from Illinois. He was like the best player in Wisconsin. I'm like a walk on on the team. So like the hierarchy, we're like different levels. So I'm like a peon and he's like royalty. And so just the archetypes that we had at that time, it made us enemies. So I'll never forget this. One day in practice, I'm trying to get on the field. So I'm one of those guys that's like, look, I'm trying hard in practice. I'm not taking off practice. I'm trying hard because I need the coach to see me so they can put me in the game. So we were doing a uh, punt team and punt team is just where you, special teams where you, you hike it, you punt the ball to the other team. You're turning the ball over to the other team. And so I'm on the, I'm really, really fast. I've always been fast. That's like one of my talents. So I'm on the edge and my goal was to block the punt. So when they hike the ball, run as fast as I can, put my arms out like a cross and block the kid. And so I get through on the first time. And Chris was on the back. He wasn't on the punt team. He was just in the back watching. And the second time I go through, the guy block. he tries to block me, and I do what's called a swim move, where when someone tries to block you, you slap their wrist like this. You just slap their wrist, and you literally just swim over them. So it's just like this. And so I get by the second time. I don't get the block, but I got by again. And I'm wearing my helmet. It's hot. It's like August is in, in Illinois. It's is the humidity is crazy. It's hot. We have black helmets, so it's super hot. And I'm walking back to my, you know, back to my side. And I hear Chris say, Somebody block this little motherfucker. I'm tired of him. And I mean, I'm I'm deep in my wounds at this time. I'm like 19 or 20, so I'm deep in my wounds. So if you say something crazy to me like that. I'm for sure going to respond to you. There's no, like, my nervous system's not regulated at this point in life. I'm a football player. Everything triggers me. So I was like, what? Why don't you get out here then? You know, like, I just started, I started yelling at him. And then he starts yelling at me. And we're just screaming at each other in the middle of practice for no reason. I mean, for really no reason. Like, when I think about it now, it's like, it was unnecessary. Me responding to him was unnecessary. Him saying that, the whole thing was just unnecessary. So for the next four years, we were enemies. We would be at study tables, which is like study hall for athletes. We would be at study tables and wouldn't speak. We would be in the same car or bus and would not speak. We would be at parties and we would not speak. I mean, we were like natural born enemies. So fast forward. Um, it must have been 2018. I get a direct message on Instagram. And I'm like, okay. I, I click it, I open it, it's him. He sent me a message and he's like, hey, Sylvester, um, you know, I love to see that what you're doing with, with your coaching and your books. Uh, I want to follow the same path. I have such a story to tell. I would love to just, just chat with you one day and just see how you, you know, got to where you are. So my old story, my nervous system, my body, my reaction, was fuck no. Why would I help you? Why would I talk to you? Why would I do anything to benefit you? You are my natural born enemy. You are my nemesis. You are the person that I hated when I was in college. You are the person that if you were at a place, I would get anxiety knowing that you were there. You stressed me out. Why would I talk to you? Why would I give you the benefit of uh, the luxury of knowing anything that I know? You weren't there for me when I was homeless. You weren't there for me. You were on scholarship. I had to earn mine. I was broke. You were rich. Why would I give you anything? Okay, do you hear the psychology here? Do you hear the language that I'm that I'm using? Do you hear the energy in it, right? It's, 
is scarcity energy. It's I'm in the womb. It's I'm living in the old me when I first got this message. So I wanted counsel because something in my heart told me like, all right, check the message again. So I went back a few days later. I checked the message again. I called my friend. Who, we have a mutual friend. One of my best friends is his friend as well. So I called my friend back in Chicago. I say, hey, you talked to Chris Slayton? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I talked to him, you know, last month or whatever. And I was like, okay. So he, I says, he reached out to me. And I'm curious as to why. And my friend that I'm talking to, I mean, he has no emotional awareness at all. So he's not really putting things together. And he was like, y'all on the same football team, man. Just just talk to him. Like, he, that, he, didn't, he didn't know all the story. The, all the story that I built up in my head that was important to me, he didn't know all the story. And he's like, just talk to him. Like, you guys are on the same football team, right? And, and the reason I'm telling you this story is I, I know you can see yourself at different pieces of your life with fragments of this story, right? I'm all in my story. I'm all in my womb. And I'm talking to my friend. I'm like, yo, what should I do? He's like, just talk to him. It's like, nah, I'm good. I'm good, bro. So like a week goes by, I go back to the message. Something took me back to the message. I respond and I say, hey, bro, let's chat. He gives me his number. I call him. We ended up talking on the phone for five hours. I, I don't think I've ever talked to another man on the phone for five hours. We talked for five hours. And during that conversation, he apologized to me for being uh, a dickhead. I apologized to him for being the same thing. And I was able to learn about his story. I was able to learn about what he was going through at the time. I was able to learn about the abuse that he was enduring. And, you know, it was so crazy to talk to him as a healed adult to say, man, I had went through the same abuse. Man, the same wounds you had, well, it was the same wounds I had. Wow, I'm looking at you as you were the most the highly most highly recruited player in Wisconsin. I had envy from you. And he said he had envy from me because of the way I just walked onto the team, created my own spot, and I was moving up faster than the other people who were recruited. And so the the interesting thing about this story, about the 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 enemy story, is I always say it's like healing means wholeness. There's always a full picture. But what we have to understand is when we are in our stories, we may not always be seeing the full picture. And then we make things personal. And when we do this, it's very hard for us to tap into abundance because abundance requires you to see the full picture. It requires you to see the full image. So I ended up, he wanted, he went, he wanted to, he essentially wanted to, wanted me to be his coach, but he wanted, he wanted to kind of, use the the fact that we were alumni and football players together he wanted to kind of use that as leverage and he wasn't really in like the financial position to do it and so I, just for the boundaries of how i honor my practice i couldn't do that but i gave him some game i gave him you know 20 minutes worth of game in that call that i was like look if you if you do this and do this and do this i think that will work for you to this day do we have a relationship where we talk all the time no but that five-hour conversation helped both of us understand where we were at in life. And more importantly, it helped me tap into abundance because it helped me realize that once I get out of my wounds, once I get out of my story, once I get out of me being important, then I can tap into this higher vibrational frequency. I didn't want to talk to him because I had, I had wrote this down. Let me write this. Let me, let me read you what I wrote down. Um, Okay, I wrote, he didn't actually hurt me. No, he didn't hurt this present version of me. I am strong. I am well. I am living in abundance. He hurt an old version of me. He hurt the vulnerable version of me. He hurt the weak version of me. He hurt the version of me that could barely stand up for myself. So why would this version of me be mad at him now? This version of me is choosing to let go of those emotions. I am okay. I am safe. I am regulated. I am able to live in compassion. The reason those were the notes that I wrote five years ago. And so what this does for you when you can get that congruence between your mind, your body just working together, uh, that's your, your cerebellum that activates. And your cerebellum is where we develop balance. It, it, it's what signals and triggers balance in your brain. And so balance, wholeness, balance, they're related. I got everything. I think I got most of it. My, my position on that is 
first listen to your heart. Your heart is going to tell you. Your heart is your your intuition. Your guidance system is always going to tell you. You already know what to do. Where I, where I, when I think about the situation with my with my enemy, as I named him, the truth of the situation is he didn't really hurt me. I perceived that situation as hurt, uh, but he didn't really hurt me. He didn't do anything to me. The the pain that I actually experienced with that enemy was not real. It was just amplified by the wounds that I already had at that time, but it wasn't real pain. It didn't stay in my DNA. It didn't stay in my brain. It didn't stay in my body. It wasn't real pain. So it was very easy to open that door. If you're opening, if you're opening your heart, you're opening your body, you're opening your mind and your energy to someone who caused you actual real pain. If you choose to do that with a lot, which a lot of us do, we we have to do that with boundaries. We have to have healthy boundaries when we do that. If you feel like you can have those healthy boundaries, then yeah, then 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 you can revisit uh, a new layer of that relationship. That happens a lot of the times where people separate and then their relationship changes and they can become friends. Sure, but you have to make sure that you can have healthy boundaries with with this person, 100%. If you feel like you cannot have healthy boundaries with this person, then there's no, then there's no reason to initiate anything because I don't want you to go back to, you know, a darker shadow emotions when it's it's not necessary. Does that make sense? This is this is the science of changing your mind right here, okay? The brain believes that the thought is the experience. So it begs the question, what do you mentally rehearse all day long and what do you physically demonstrate? That shows who you are on a neurological level. This this line is important. Write this down. Mental rehearsal changes brain chemistry. Same future every day. It's going to happen by thought alone. If you are thinking the same way, then you keep the same genes on and the same genes off. Your body will begin to signal new genes emotionally once you visualize the experience. There's a library of potential impossibilities. Write that one down. There's a library of potential impossibilities. As you begin to signal the gene, then you can signal the proteins that help create that reality. Here, I think I can copy and paste this. Someone, someone take this. I'm going to put it in here. Someone just add it to our chat real quick because um, I know this chat will disappear. Paste. Did that go through? Yeah. All right. Someone add that to our, our WhatsApp chat. When it comes to abundance, one of the the practices we can tap into is 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 called an elevated state. Okay, so you can regulate new genes in your DNA by moving to an elevated state. So, for example, if I get overly filled with with joy right now, I'm creating a new reality. I can right now close my eyes, just all of us can, and we can literally create and feel the experience of joy with no stimulation, with no music, with no more money, with no food, with no one prodding us, with no one telling us we're great. We can, you can close your eyes and you can cultivate the experience of joy. And you can cultivate anger. You right now could close your eyes and you could sit with yourself and you could find a reason to be pissed off. We have the power in our brains to literally create an emotion, but let's start to call it elevated states. Emotion, an elevated state. And what the studies are showing is that when we have an elevated state and we have a vision and we combine those things together, it's easier to actually create and live in congruence with that vision when you have an elevated emotion. So for example, when you hear people set New Year's resolutions, what do they always say? They always say the same three things. I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna make money, and I'm gonna improve my love life. Those are the only three things people say for New Year's resolution. It's the same thing. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing. We all love that stuff, okay? But they always lack the emotional, the elevated state of it. 
And so the goals fall short because it's like, oh, I'm going to make more money. What? It's not a goal. That's what that's what my that's what my four year old would tell me. It's 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 not deep enough. It means nothing. Oh, I'm gonna make more money. Okay, how? How are you gonna do it? I'm going to make more money because I'm tired of being poor. I cannot afford a ham sandwich. I couldn't pay my rent this month. I had to go down to the plasma center and donate my blood, and they pulled the plasma out. I had to I had to whatever i had to do i had to take out a loan for a thousand dollars i had to ask my mom for money i had to ask my cousin for money i don't like the shame of asking people for money i don't like that i have to donate blood out of my arm to get money so therefore i'm going to make ten thousand dollars next month so when you do it that way now you have elevate i have i, I just have chills right now because you have elevated emotion well, the, where we go wrong with all things whether whether it's abundance whatever it is is we worry about how we're going to do it when that's not even the most important. The most important is why. The why encompasses your vision and your elevated emotion. So that person that was just talking to us gave us the elevated emotions. They're tired of shame. They're tired of the disappointment. They're tired of not having access to just get a, a sandwich for themselves. They're frustrated. They're angry. They're pissed off. They're using those elevated emotions and they have a clear vision. They say they're going to make $10,000 next month. It doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter how because now they're living in that reality. They're living in congruence emotionally. They're living in congruence with that reality. So now the next step after that is, okay, well, how are you going to do it? Well, it's, a, it's much easier now because I'm living in alignment emotionally with what I want energetically i'm living in the abundance of what i want i'm a strong 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 believer in belief Dude, that's what we're talking about we're talking about belief but because of the stories that people have sometimes people don't allow themselves to believe because of the stories because of pain because of trauma because of well sylvester i failed every math test i've taken and so if i come in and i tell you you can pass the next one because they have this evidence of never passing a math test, to them, they're going to stay stuck in that, oh, well, I've never passed, so why would I pass this one? That's the way their, their, their psychology is looking at it. So what I'm trying to get people to understand is, like, it doesn't matter what happened to you. It doesn't. What matters is, are you going to use in this moment the elevated emotion? Are you going to have a clear vision now? Because once you do that, you're literally creating your reality. So I, I agree. Yes, I would like to, to tell people, like, you got to believe, you got to believe. But just from doing this work for 14 years, I realized, again, like, if I talk to you and I'm like, hey, believe this, believe this, you're you're open enough to be like, all right, I, I just got to believe it. Not everybody is open enough to the to the frequency of belief. So that's why I say it. That's why I say it that way. Does that make sense? When, when you were manifesting your house, I had a notebook that was just like this. It was black. It was a black notebook. And I was probably 12 or 13 years old and I would write my stories. I would write quotes. I would write poems. I would write stories. I would develop characters. And every single time I would sign my name and I used to always say to myself, I'm going to be a best-selling author one day. The same signature that I practiced at 12 or 13 is the exact same one I do right now. So I manifested it. I created it. It was the exact same thing. Your brain doesn't know the difference. And, and, that's the, and that's the power. Repetition rewires the brain. And so that's the power of when you're rehearsing a reality that you want to experience, you are creating that, that congruence for yourself to live in it. If you guys remember, we're all, we're, all about the, we're all about the same age. We all experience the same, a lot of the same stuff. I remember I used to go in certain teachers' rooms. It was one teacher specifically. He had pictures. It was like a picture of a house. It was a picture of like a Lambo. It was like all these things, all these like things he wanted to achieve. And he used to always just say like, oh, if you think it, you can achieve it. If you think it, you can do it. That is manifestation in itself. You freeze reality into the same patterns when you revisit your life with the same frame of mind. Knowledge is for the mind. Experience is for the body. You freeze reality into the same patterns when you revisit your life with the same frame of mind. Same frame of mind. 
Knowledge is for the mind, experience is for the body. Okay, quick summary. My mom came out here. I moved out to Arizona in 2012. I've been here for 12 years. Been back to Chicago several times. When I moved here, the purpose of moving here, it was twofold. It was threefold. I wanted to quit my corporate job and do my own thing, be an author. I wanted to find myself and heal from the wounds and the trauma and the, my old story. And I eventually wanted to find a woman out here I could have kids with. That was Those were my three missions. That's why I left Chicago. Um, going back to Chicago the first few years was extremely hard for me. Why? Because I was in my same wound. So when I would go back, it would just trigger me. It would just trigger me. It would trigger my nervous system because I was not healed. So I said to myself, I'm not going anymore until, I, until I'm actually healed, until I'm in a safe space within my body. So I did some more work. Um, I did my yoga all the time. I did for for me, talk therapy doesn't doesn't work for me. For me, it's somatic. The pain that I experienced, it got trapped in my body. So I had to somatically because I was physically abused. So because I was physically abused by my father, I had to release it out of my body. Uh, so I was running. I was running all the time. I was doing yoga. I was seeing a chiropractor. And then I ended up uh, doing shrooms, doing my daily journaling, um, just work, working on myself that way. And that released everything. Uh, waking up, making sure that I tap into my circ circadian rhythm, waking up, getting the sun on me, sunbathing midday, walking at the sunset. For me, my whole life, I built my whole life around how I'm treating my body because that's the number one way that I healed myself. So I go back to Chicago uh 2017 it took me five years to heal the heal the pain out of my body 2017 I, man i was thriving i went back to my old neighborhood i went to where I, I used to play football i went to my high school i drove i mean it was amazing i went back to my favorite pizza place i went back i had no wounds i had no more pain nothing triggered me right the true sign of healing is when you are in the same situation or the same stimuli or, or the same emotion comes up but you don't have a reaction to it that's how you know that you heal so I'm in, I'm in Chicago. I'm in these places that used to trigger me or I used to be fearful. And I'm just like, man, I'm cool. Like I, I got a pizza place over here. I like my wing places over here. I'm feeling joy in my experience. I go to my mom's house in 2017. I'm like, mom, you got to come out to Arizona. You would love it out here. I'm like the weather's great. You guys got winter. I know you hate the winter. Come on out. She won't come because she's in her old story. She's in her money story. Well, we don't have the money for that. We do I was like, mama, we got the money for it. You need to come to Arizona. Like, let's go. We're living in different energetic money stories. She's living in we don't have enough. I'm living in we got enough. Let's go. And even if we didn't have enough, I'm living in we'll find a way. She's living in we don't have enough. There is no way. She's living in poverty mindset. She's actually living in poverty. For real, for real. Living in poverty. And I'm living in it doesn't matter what my situation is. It doesn't matter what school I went to. It doesn't matter who I'm up against. I'm going to thrive. It's two different vibrational frequencies. So I have to break my, it takes me seven years from that time. All right. It took seven years. I finally, and I'm like, I was really on her. I finally convinced her to say yes. And she was like, well, how am I going to get there? I was like, look, and rem remember back in uh, November, December, when we were in here talking about leadership, this is when I was challenging myself to become a better leader. So I, I call my mom, I'm like, look, mom, I got the whole plan. I got the whole plan. Like, don't worry about nothing. I know money is a thing for you. Don't think about anything. I'm going to take care of everything. I'm going to make sure that you get from your house to the airport. You won't spend money. Food that you need to get, you won't spend money. You're going to come and stay here. I have a, a big house. You have a room. You're going to have a new bed. You're going to have new sheets. You're going to have space to yourself. I know my mom, she's, a, she's an introvert and she needs her own space to recharge. So I said, look, you also will have your own private door. So if you need to escape because you want to smoke your cigarettes or go for a walk or whatever, you can do that. So I covered all her bases I and I pitched it to her. She said, OK, she's like, all right, I'll come out there. So I was like, all right, cool. The day before she's going to she's supposed to fly out here. She goes back into her old story. She goes back into her old story. Well, I don't have the money for this and I don't have this and I don't have that. Right. She's trying to go back to the old paradigm. And what I'm doing is I'm not allowing anyone to bring me back to anything scarcity. Any, if you try to bring me back to scarcity, I won't allow it because I can only live in the frequency of abundance. I, it is a choice I made years and years ago when I moved here. 
I said to her one of little friends, I said, Ma, don't worry about it. You're worrying about the wrong things. I got this. She was like, all right. Now, what I had to understand is that consciously she hasn't actually been with the man since she broke up with my father. So it's very hard. For, I, I'm thinking about this like it's hard for her to trust a man because she hasn't been with one. So I'm thinking like I'm showing her that it's OK to trust a man, essentially. She gets out here. She's out here for four days. I mean, and she loved it. She fell in love. She just was full of joy. She was full of just pride and happiness she expressed emotions that i've never seen my mother experience that i that i've never uh seen her experience one of my threads with my mother is that um she she was not always like emotionally expressive she was always more emotionally reserved and as a consequence i would never know how she was feeling and so I'll, that's why I would fall into like these people pleasing traits when I was younger, because I would try to get an emotional reaction out of her to please her to know that she was alive. The truth is, I didn't have to do that. Well, I felt like at the time I had to do that. But the truth is, she was not emotionally abundant because of the things that she was going through. So when she was here, she was emotionally abundant. But why do you think that is? Why is it that a person think about this? We, we talked about the word environment. Why is it that a person who lives in scarcity mindset and a scarcity mold was able to leave that environment? She came to an environment that is an abundant environment. The energy in this in the space, the energy in the house, the energy that I'm giving her is full abundance. And then when she gets here, it takes her almost no time to tap into her own abundant energy. And now she is expressing herself in a more abundant way. It is the environment. So my mom is the type of person where if I say, hey, control your thoughts, shift your thoughts, it's never going to work for her. That that access point won't work. That like If that's the front door, she won't get in. So I took her through the back door, which is let's change the environment that you're in and see what happens. We change the environment and now she's in abundance. Now she gets back to Chicago and she's like, okay, I got to get bigger windows. I noticed you have huge windows in your house. I have to get bigger windows. I need to get some plants over here. I, I took her some tea that I that I bought from Columbia I, or some coffee. She's like, okay, I saw how you make your coffee. You're really slow. You're intentional about it. Now I'm making my coffee real slow and I'm super intentional. My mom is 60 something years old. They always say you can't teach your old dogs new tricks. That's not true. Any human being at any moment can be rewired. We just talked about and learned about the neuroscience of it. We can all be rewired. And here my mom was, she just changed her environment for four days. And she's on a completely different trajectory where she's now allowing more abundance into her life. And for her, abundance is just having a nice slow cup of coffee instead of the fast cup of coffee. The fast, like, no flavor. She's like, no, I'm going to have slow coffee. She's like, every day I was there, you had a slow cup of coffee. She's like, this coffee you brought from Colombia tastes amazing. She said, like, I never tasted coffee like this. Right? And go go ahead. Somebody has something to say? Yeah. I, I want to be mindful of time. We're not done. Stick with me. It's, it's this, this, I love this subject. Just stick with me. Okay, I'm going to wrap up the mom story. So as this relates to what we've talked about so far today, one of the sec I think the second question I asked you was, does your environment control your thinking or does your thinking control your environment? That's worth investigating because when it comes to the concept of creating abundance, we have to understand we're all different. For some people, boom, you just control your thinking and you're there. You just you just manifest, I'm going to be in this house, boom, and I'm there. It's easy, right? But some people got to change the environment. Like, man, I want to stop betting. Let me change. Let me change the apps. Man, I actually want to finish my book. All right, let me delete Netflix. Let me delete these distractions. Let me delete video games. Let me delete my husband, whatever it is. It's like, oh, man, I want to whatever the fitness goal is. Okay, then I need to look at my food environment. I need to look at my gym environment. I need to look at the people around me, whatever it is, right? We're all different. So measure that for your life. Is it your thinking or is it your environment? And, and just understand that they have a, a reciprocal relationship. They work together. Notice we didn't talk about money, right? A lot of the times when we hear the word abundance, that's where the American mind goes to. It's like, oh, money, money, money. Oh, it's bigger than that. 
is bigger than that. This is about our emotions. This is about how we feel. This is about the textures that we access. This is about the ingredients that we put in our body. This is about the quality of the sounds that we hear. This is about the quality of the words that we're choosing to say to other people. This is about the quality of the words that we're putting into our brain. You all woke up on a Saturday morning and you're downloading vibrations and, and information to make sure that you have a great day, a great week, a great life. So just I want you to just honor your own journey because you're already tuned in and in alignment with the energy of abundance. And that's our time for today. Y'all have a good one. You're now tuned in to the high vibration of the Free Your Energy podcast. podcast. podcast.